Hello everyone, this is Selena. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share how I transitioned from a PhD student into a life science consultant. I got my PhD in chemistry about four years ago and I was a prior consultant for about three years. Now I transition to the client side. Right now I work under the commercialization strategy function of a biotech company. So if you're also someone who's passionate about the intersection of science and business, please keep watching. And in this video, I'm gonna share everything about personal and career development. If those are the topics you're interested, please consider subscribe to this video. Consulting is not that hard. You just get an interview, crush it, and then repeat it twice or maybe four times, and boom, you will get an offer. That's it. It's that simple. Well, it's probably not that simple, but those are the two key steps. First, get an interview, and second, crush the case interview. So I'm going to talk about these two components. But before I dive in, I do want to spend maybe one minute to share a little bit more about life science consulting. If you are already pretty familiar about what it is, please use the timestamps below to skip this part and dive right into the, the joy part. So starting with what is life science consulting, it's kind of straightforward because you work with clients in the life science industry. So I'm talking about biotech, biopharma, pharmaceutical companies, as well as medical device uh, diagnostic companies. Um, sometimes you will also work with private equity or venture capital companies that are investing in the life sciences space. So it's really solving problems in the life sciences industry. There are some very typical type of problems such as um, opportunity assessment. So basically understanding uh, what is the revenue potential of a new molecule in different disease areas. And another very common type of question is indication prioritization. So let's say if you have a molecule that has the potential to be developed in multiple disease areas, so how do you choose between all these different disease areas? So if you're interested in how to solve those problems, please leave comments down below and I can make future videos and walk you through how to think through these different types of problems. In terms of consulting firms, in addition to the big three or big four consulting firms where they typically have their own life science practice, you will also hear about the boutique life science consulting firms such as Trinity, ZS, IQVIA, Panam, Clearview, etc. I think this is a great opportunity for someone who has their degree in like biochemistry, biology, bioengineering, or anything related to biology, medical, um, or even just STEM, um, STEM in general, because this is a great space where you can leverage your scientific understanding to better understand different disease areas and how different drugs or platform work to help inform the business decision. Well, with that, let's talk about how to get an interview. So in this section, I'm gonna split it into three different areas. First, resume, second, extracurriculum activity, and third is um, networking. So first is resume. The biggest problem I see my fellow PhD friends have when they submit their resume into uh, for a consulting role is the bullets are too technical and too academic. It's so hard for someone who's outside of your field to understand what, what you actually did. The one tip I have is to edit your bullet and make it impact focus. So what is the impact driven from your work? So for example, one of my 
um, research topic is um, developing a ruthenium dual photochemotherapy drug that can release the uh, caseptin K inhibitor as well as singlet oxygen. That's really a mouthful. So if I have to condense it into one bullet, it will be around that I developed a novel drug release system that can have very targeted radiation activated drug release without systemic toxicity. So I think that's much simpler for folks to understand the impact of your work. The second tip I have around resume, I'm sure you heard this from elsewhere, is to quantify everything. So for example, how many times you presented at national or regional conferences, how many publications you have, and how high the impact factor is from your, your publications. If you are able to demonstrate how strong you have achieved academically, the consulting firm will also believe that you can achieve the same success in the business world. The last tip I have on resume is to condense it into one page. Especially if you are someone who is just fresh out of grad school, two pages of resume really waste time for the interviewers to, to scan through. So make sure you condense your experience and really focus on the impact. Alrighty, so we've talked about resume. The second point around getting an interview is extracurriculum activities. Like I mentioned earlier, when I was applying consulting in my fifth year of my um, PhD program, I didn't have any extracurriculum activities. I think that's also why I wasn't getting many interviews at that time. Although I did got interview from one of the big three consulting firm just because I was able to showcase how strong I was academically. However, if you are still someone who's relatively early in your PhD program, I would strongly encourage you to join your school's consulting club uh, to get some hands-on experience like working with nonprofit companies or uh, participate in any uh, sort of of uh, consulting projects. It's usually pro bono consulting projects, but it can really expose you how to think about and structure different uh, problems. The third tip is networking. If you're too shy to networking, please look at more videos around how to networking and how to find people on LinkedIn. I think networking is such a great opportunity to just get your resumes into the recruiter's um, hands. And it's usually if you have someone who can refer you within the firm, they can usually just email your resume to the recruiter and it will just enhance the opportunity that they will look at your resume and then give you an interview. It really depends on different firms. I have experience in my previous firm where I um, referred a, a friend of mine who actually didn't have a really strong resume um, based on my experience, but I shared that resume with our recruiter. They just replied right away, okay, they will schedule a first round screening interview with this person. Yeah, so don't be shy and reach out and find folks on LinkedIn and try to get a referral. If you're interested in how to get a referral, please also comment down below and I can share more tips on how to leverage LinkedIn for a referral. Well, that concludes my three tips to get consulting interviews. First, tailor your resume, make sure it's impact oriented and easy for people to understand. And secondly is to participate extracurriculum activities like consulting club and internship to showcase your interest in this space as well as gaining hands-on experience. And last but not least, um, start networking. Start networking today and meet more new people and try to get referrals. It's always fun to meet new people and don't be shy. All right, so if you already got an interview, how to crush your interview? I want to say consulting interviews are one of the 
easiest and also the hardest type of interviews to prepare for. It's easy because the format is predictable, but it's hard because all the cases are different. Um, so let's first talk about uh, the format, which is case interview. Um, in terms of case interview, I think different firms do it a little bit differently, but usually it contains a portion of behavioral interview and then a, another portion of uh, solving for a case. I think very specifically for life science case interviews, you are always solving a problem within the life sciences space. So like I mentioned earlier, the types of uh, case interviews include like opportunity assessment, indication prioritization. Um, I think really those are the two most common types of interviews. And then depending on different types of firms, if some firm is more focused on data or more focused on pricing, you will have some other very specific type of uh, cases. Let me know if this is a topic you are interested in, and then I can use another video to share more about how to solve for case interviews. But one really quick high level tip is to uh, find your structure. It's always about structure thinking, how to showcase that you are someone who's analytical, who can solve things in a very structured way. Um, so the frameworks are helpful. I think a second big component about uh, crushing your interview is to really learn more about the industry. This is something you can just learn from uh, doing different type of cases. This also has to come from a lot of readings. Um, reading materials, including better understand the overall value chain of the life science industry, how the different components within this industry work, like pharma companies and then payers and then uh, patients and providers. So how different components actually work, having that understanding can help you better, especially uh, when it comes to later rounds, um, when you talk to more senior like partners, managing directors, you can really showcase your deep understanding of this industry. Um, I think it really stands out if you're someone who's fresh out of school and can showcase your understanding of the industry. And second uh, reading is more about the, I think the cutting edge of the industry. What, what is new? What are hot technologies out there? Like a few years ago, it's all about like CRISPR gene editing. And uh, I think last year it was really big about Alzheimer's disease. And this year, I'm sure you heard about the obesity or diabetes drug GLP-1s or GIPs. So if you have extra bandwidth outside of daily research, uh, spend some time reading the industry news. A few um, resources I recommend is Endpoint as well as Fierce Pharma. Uh, I'll put the names down below in the description box so you can subscribe and get some just what's going on in the industry. One last but not the least, I think it's really important to show how passionate you are about the industry in your interview. It really comes through from some of the behavioral questions. They may ask how, wh why, why, why this firm, why life science consulting. Th this is the great opportunity to show your passion. The firm is not only looking for someone who can solve the case interview, but they are also looking for someone who is genuinely interested in this industry and can bring in more passion and innovation into solving problems. I think it really stands out, especially in later rounds where you try to distinguish yourself from other candidates that really comes down to your passion and your knowledge. So also make sure to uh, prepare for those behavioral questions and try to find opportunity to, to showcase your, your interest. 
Alrighty, I think that concludes the how to question interview. I know I haven't gone really deep into solving specific life science case interviews. If that's something you're interested, let me know in the comments and I can do a mock case with you together to show some very um, more common framework. But beyond case interview, also make sure you are on top of the industry news and understand the value chain within this industry. Last but not least, showcase your passion throughout the interview and especially leverage the um, behavioral questions to, to show why you are so interested in their firm and in, in this role. Already, so that concludes the, the whole video. I hope through this video, I shared with you a little bit more about what is life science consulting and how to get an interview and crush an interview. Let me know if you have any additional questions and uh, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I'll see you the next time.